Hello, Ahorja. Welcome to Stories, Legends and Wonders of Orin. Orin is also known as Inishmore, the largest of the three Aran Islands. I'm Dara Malloy, Dara Omailia Askailge. This is episode number six of Stories, Legends and Wonders of Aran, and the topic is Colum Kill who is known as Columba in Scotland, but Colum Kill in Ireland. And here in Arran, on Inish Moor, we have an altar dedicated to him. Today, we're going to visit Altor Colum Kill, the altar of Colum Kill. Colum Kill was probably the greatest saint that Ireland ever produced. And um, the stories about him visiting here and meeting up with the abbot Enda. And I want to tell you that story in particular. But he's so important that there's an altar dedicated to him down here on the shore. And I'm going to show you that altar today and I'm going to tell you all about him. So here we are at the altar dedicated to the memory of Colum Kill. He's also known as Columba in Scotland, so don't confuse it. Columba and Colum Kill are the same person. Columbanus is a different person. I'm sorry now to confuse you. So, but we know him here as Colum Kill, and actually his name is carved on the bottom of this stone, which has been erected in his memory. Colum Kill probably is and was the most famous and most charismatic and perhaps most saintly of the Irish monks produced in the early period of Celtic Christianity. So he was born in the 6th century. But like every other young person who was uh, planning to become a monk, he came out to visit the Aran Islands and that meant meeting Saint Enda, the abbot who was here. And the rule of hospitality, of course, in all these monasteries, especially in the one set up by Enda, is that everybody is to be welcomed because within them is the light of Christ and you're welcoming Christ to the, to the community. But when Colum Kill arrived here, Enda knew he was in trouble. Colum Kill was the son of one of the, well, of the greatest king in Ireland in Ulster and Enda was simply the son of a small king in, uh, uh, up in a bit south of, the, of that northern kingdom. Um, and he felt threatened by the arrival of Colm Kill because he said to himself, if Colm Kill settles here as a monk, everybody will be drawn towards him because he's a more powerful, he comes from a more powerful tribe than I come from. And he also has charism, which I think probably Enda spotted. Um, so Enda met him down here on this little piece of ground. Colum Kill came in off the boat and Enda uh, confronted him and said, um, I'm sorry, Colm Kill, but I cannot welcome you here. Uh, you're going to have to turn around and go back. And Colm Kill was very, uh, very shocked, of course, and he was only a young man at the time. And he said, but I, I'm, I want to dedicate my life to being a monk. I don't want to own anything. I don't want to have any power. I just want to live the spiritual life. And you're the place, your place here is the place where I can train to be that. And he looked at St. Enda and he said, look, I just want a piece of ground the size of my cloak. And he took off his cloak and he laid it on the ground. And he said, there you are. Just give me a piece of ground that size and I'll build a little hut for myself. And that's where I'll begin my monastic life. And um, while they looked at his cloak on the ground, the cloak began to spread, just like in the story of St. Bridget. And it spread and spread and spread. And this field over here, this whole promontory out here, forget the walls now, just the whole promontory, that's called today Gert na Gochel, the field of the cloak. So the cloak expanded to cover that whole area and would have continued to expand only that Enda gathered it up 
rolled it into a ball, pushed it against Colum Kill's chest, and Colum Kill fell off the edge over here, down onto the rocks below. And if you look at the curvature in those rocks, that's the mark of Colum Kill's ribs on the rocks. So everything about the story is remembered in the landscape. That's why you could call it a sacred landscape. That's not the end of the story because Colum Kill then had to find a way off the island. His boat that had brought him here was gone. So he sat on one of these rocks. And when the tide went out, didn't the rock begin to float? And float him way out and brought him to County Clare, where you'll find the rock remembered there. In fact, Colum Kill's rock is remembered all around this coastline. There's various, uh, <coughs> various editions of it, if you like. And we have Colum Kill's, Colum Kill's rock here too. It's over just at the end of the airstrip over there. And um, it, it, it's, a, it's a boulder that sits on top of a flat surface of rock. And when the boats come in and out, they all, in the past, they all dipped their sails. But fishermen, even today, would bless themselves going past it and call, call in a blessing. So that's another mark on the landscape re representing Colum Kill. However, Colum Kill was young and when he was offended, he got angry. And when he was angry floating out on this rock, he cursed the island that rejected him hospitality. And he put three curses on the island. These, this island here in Ishmore. The first was that it would have no soil, all rock, which indeed is still true today. The second curse was it have, it have no trees which is very true here today. There's no trees on, on Inishmore or on any of the three Aran Islands. And the third curse was that the islands would always be ruled by outsiders. So we have found it as a community very difficult to get rid of those curses. And my idea is that no one person will be able to do it because it would take a person greater than Colum Kill to reverse those curses. But if we all gather together, we can reverse them. And I think that's what we're doing now. So, um, just to fill in the background on Colum Kill, Colum Kill, as you know, went on to found many other monasteries, especially the mon monastery of Derry, Derry Colum Kill, the Oak Forest of Colum Kill. That was his most famous monastery. He's also attributed to have founded other monasteries, which he wouldn't have founded directly, but they became named after him later on. But another monastery he did found, of course, was Iona in Scotland, and that became his most famous monastery. And from there, Celtic Christianity, Celtic monasticism spread across, across all of Scotland and down into northern England. Lindisfarne and other places became also famous monastic uh, communities until the Vikings came and started to attack them. And we, we know also that the Book of Kells probably came from Col Col Colum Kills or Columba's monastery in Iona. So if history had worked out differently and our church in Ireland had not become Romanized but remained Celtic, we would not be celebrating St. Patrick today as our patron saint because he was used in our history, in our revising of history, to represent uh, the, the, the Roman Church coming into Ireland. We instead would be celebrating St. Colum Kill or St. Columba as the patron saint of Ireland and his feast day is the 9th of June. I'd like to read for you now a famous poem written by St. Colum Kill called Farewell to Aaron. So clearly there's more than one version of the story of Colum Kill's arrival on the Aran Islands. The story I told you uh, is the story of his like refusal to be accepted here. But clearly there are other stories that talk of him having been accepted here but having to leave and very sad to leave. And this is the poem that he would have written in that situation. Farewell from me to Aaron. A sad farewell. I think. I must go east to Iona, separated since the flood. A farewell from me to Aaron, it torments my heart not to be in the west by her billows, among throngs of heaven's saints. A farewell from me to Aaron, a sad farewell it is. Aaron, full of fair angels, not even a servant with me in my curragh. The Son of God, oh, it is the Son of God who sends me to Iona and gives Enda what prosperity, Aaron, the Rome of pilgrims. Aaron, 
son, O Aaron, son. My love stays with her in the west. Whoever lies under her pure earth will never be seen by the devil's eye. Saintly Aaron, O saintly Aaron, woe to him who is her foe. For angels come from heaven to visit her every day of the week. Gabriel comes each Sunday, for Christ has so ordered. And fifty angels, no feeble power, to bless her masses. Every Monday, oh every Monday, Michael comes, a great advantage. And thirty angels, their habit is good, to bless her churches. Every Tuesday, oh every Tuesday, Raphael comes, of mysterious power, to bless the houses serving her guests. On Hard Wednesday, O oh Hard Wednesday, Uriel comes, a great advantage, and three times blesses her high angelic cemeteries. On every Thursday, or oh every Thursday, Seriel comes, a great treasure, that God's beneficence be poured from heaven onto her bare stones that day. On Friday, on Friday, comes Ramiel and his host, that every eye be filled with the sight of truly bright, beauteous angels. Mary, mother of God's son, and her train comes too with angels among the host, to bless Aaron on a Saturday. If there were no life in Aaron but listening to her angels, it would be better than any other life under heaven to hear their celebrations. These stories of Cullum Kill or Columba and all the other stories that are uh, about, that are to be found on the Aran Islands um, can be found in my book Pocket Guide to Orin, Legends in the Landscape. And that's available from our website www.ashlingpublications.com with Ashling spelled A-I-S-L-I-N-G. So ashlingpublications.com.